What a great opportunity we have here. We're at Prairie Star Farms up in Missouri, and we happen to be here with the owners, Bruce, Jan. And so both of them are, have very strong suits in what they really, their knowledge base. And so Bruce, tell us, uh, what do you bring to the table? Uh, what, what's your expertise? I bring my wife. <laughs> she's, she's the brains of this outfit, so. Uh, uh, but I guess in, in, in married life, you know, you say or promise you a rose garden. I right. never promise you a rose garden, but we're surrounded by flowers here and better than a rose garden and and I think Jan absolutely loves it and the greatest part is Jan can identify all of the plants all of the flowers um, and tells a story and what value they are to us and to the wildlife and that's cool I love that part so he built you up way up high put you on a pedestal <laughs> which is cool uh, yes. tell him how unique is this in, in prairie lands in themselves we're having an issue with keeping them, right? Uh, prairie is probably the rarest of our ecosystems. It's depleted mainly because it is the red basket of the United States. It's uh -huh. what was plowed up and used for our agribusiness and um, what is left, it was just those little parcels that really could not be plowed. So there are very, very few acres left and um, our attempt here is never to create a prairie because that takes you know an incredible amount of time uh -huh. but we are trying to push our um, our ecosystem back to what we might have had here pre-settlement in plants right um, it, it is an opportunity for us to see what the earth will do on its own giving it a little bit of rest time from pasturing it or our uh, growing agriculture in it um, it is, it is an opportunity for people to see what it was like when their grandparents were here. Before we started manipulating the ground for greater yield. So um, when people come here, it's always amazing to see how, how much they're drawn into the environment. They get out of the vehicles for a variety of things. I mean, they come for social events and for school events and before you know it though they're just kind of drawn out into that landscape and um, so it's uh, it's a learning experience for them to see um, our our plant life that was always here and find some value in it and it's fun especially with kids to take them on a little tour about and and look at plants for you know the the simple value of them there's one in the in the field that's called a cup plant uh -huh. And um, the leaves grow down around the base, creating this cup, hence the name. Uh -huh. But in pre-settlement days, if you were in a buckboard um, with your mom and dad, they'd send you out in front of that buckboard in the morning with a pail, and you tip those plants over and drain the water out that would collect there overnight from dew or rain, right. and it was potable water then. It was water right. that they would use throughout the day for their drinking water. Oh, wow. um, so having our kids come in and see that sort of... Uh, relationship of of young people from a hundred years ago to where they are now. I hope that it not only gives them a, a glimpse into the past, but makes them appreciative of turning on the faucet in their kitchen right. and having water at their whim and will, and not to learn not to be wasteful with it, and to give them a little bit more ethic about how they live on this earth. So. Yeah, and, and some of this uh, comes about from controlled burning, right? Um, the Native Americans that lived on this planet uh, didn't have bulldozers, they didn't have chemicals, they had brush hogs and tractors, they didn't have any of that stuff. The only tool they had to manage the landscape was fire. And they used fire um, intensely. If they wanted to travel across the landscape, wading through that tall grass was a mess. So they just burn it and it makes travel easy. Uh -huh. They burn to clear a landscape, they burn in warfare, they burn to cover their tracks when retreating from a battle. Um, they burn at certain times of year because they know the vegetative response the following year was going to yield certain plants that were beneficial to them. Um, for a thousand reasons they burn. Uh, and our plants adapted to fire 
and we have a robust vegetation and a robust landscape because of it. And so we duplicate the same thing here. We don't brush hog and we don't use chemical sprays except to control the exotic vegetation, those things that aren't native to Missouri. Uh, but we use fire to manage the vegetation and it has great response. Isn't that cool? So your opportunity to come out to Prairie Star Farms is when they're having their event June 2nd and 3rd, 2017. So a lot of people will be coming out to look at the structures and the reenactors that are coming out, but some people I think will be coming out just to check out the, you know, the environment here. And so uh, this is our invitation for you to come. You can quiz Jan about all the flowers and everything. And of course the fire master would be more than happy to talk to you about fire, how they're using it here to make it a better place. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep.